Hey guys, today we're gonna go from a Blender render to DaVinci Resolve and get a final export with color grading in DaVinci Resolve. So here's something I've kind of made in uh, Blender. I did the tutorial on how to do this like previous video, so check the channel to see it. You wanna see how to make this. And so I have this kind of uh, looping kind of animation. So now the question is how do I export this and how do I color grade? So if I do a single frame, it looks okay. My biggest tip for doing kind of content is I always uh, export it in square 1920 by 1920 so I can crop it for horizontal and vertical video. That way I don't have to kind of redo stuff. So I have to have kind of big margins. I also like to export in 60 FPS and then um, that's kind of the main thing. So then I know from zero to 180, it's actually 181 frames because the zeroth frame goes there. So this is gonna be like a little over three seconds. And so then what I'm gonna export as is uh, EXR. And so I go down here and to open EXR, I'm gonna do float for half and I'm gonna do DWAA lossy. I'm gonna pull the quality down to like 75. So this is way better than PNG. And I, there's a bunch of tutorials out there talking about the differences between different file formats, but open EXR and EXR files are just the, so much easier to work with and so much better. It'll basically export a image sequence versus an MP4 for you, which will have to restitch together in a different video program. I'm going to use DaVinci Resolve because that's what I'm comfortable doing and that's what I like to do. So I have it basically set. Then down in color management, I'm going to say override and I'm going to go to AGX log. So I get all of that color data. And that's also kind of the main reason why I'm also exporting an EXR is this is a good file type to get all this extra color data and like light data uh, to better play with it in DaVinci Resolve later. So this is all good to go. I'm now going to go to render render animation. So then before we render, we want to make sure we export them into a good spot. So I have a little EXR thingy. And so then I'm going to go to new folder. I'll call this uh, Taurus animation one. I'll say accept. I'll say Taurus animation one render render animation and so now that it's rendering it'll take a couple seconds for it to be done maybe a few minutes so now it's finished rendering so we're going to go to davinci resolve and pull that up okay, so i have a new project opened i'm going to go to the edit tab down here and then i'm going to pull in and i'm going to pull in my exr sequence like this so i select all of them and click and drag it in and if you do it correctly it should pull in as a one kind of animation versus the singular thing so one thing that's off right here is the timing is off because I didn't make the overall sequence of the, the timeline correct. So I'm gonna, un, I'm gonna delete this and I'm gonna go into my timeline settings down here and I'm gonna go to frame rate and I'm gonna say 60. And this looks good now. And I can say save, change. And I'm gonna go back in and then I'm gonna go to my desktop, XR files working, chorus, pull it all in. Now it's 3.01, that looks like we were expecting it. I'm gonna click and drag it into the timeline. I can push play and be able to look at the animation again. Great. So now we're looking at this compared to the blender. This is not the same. Why is it not the same? Because it's being saved in AGX log, so the color space is off. So the easiest way to change that is to add some color transforms above it. The way I like doing that is I like to add in adjustment layers. So I'm gonna go over here to effects I'm gonna search, adjustment, clip, boom, hold on top. So this right here is clear. So think of it kind of like a layer in Photoshop where all of the things that are down here are gonna go down to the rest of it. I'm gonna to go to the color space tab, which is right here. And then I'm gonna do Alt S a couple times to make some more nodes in serial. I'm gonna take this node, I'm gonna right click it and go to LUT, AGX LUT, AGX LUT. So now this should be exactly the same for what we're seeing in Blender and here. As we see, it looks basically exactly the same. Fantastic. What this means is what we can do is also further color correct. So we have this uh, this LUT being uh, changed. So a LUT stands for a lookup table. It's just a lookup table and all it's doing is it's taking the different uh, color values and, and transforming it based off of the, a, a set way, essentially. So what's nice is we have a higher resolution of data before this transformation right here. If we do Alt S and we add in extra nodes, we can do some really easy changes right here in the kind of uh, the curve section. So I'm just gonna show you what happens. We add some little nodes right here and pull up and down. You can see how it's changing the colors and making hue and saturation different based off of the actual hues you're shifting right here. Take it like this, pull it up. So this is kind of like a way to add some colors 
and make it a bit more vibrant. And hue and illumination. Kind of what I do is I just take where there are uh, peaks, and then I just choose those to then work with. So luminance is going to make it brighter. And luminance versus saturation. Let's see. Like how bright is it and how saturated is it? Essentially, all you're doing is whatever you want to do to make it kind of look in a certain way. For YouTube and how I like to make my renders, I try to make it like super poppy. So that's kind of the main idea. And past the LUT, what I like to do is make a few more nodes in Serial, and then I will then change the HDR features. And so I will increase the darks by, by lowering them. So it's more black. Black, pull down, nice. Shadows. And the lights can pull up a little bit. Nice. Highlights. And that's kind of the main idea for working with it. Then to make it loop longer, you can just copy and paste it a bunch of times. Like, then to change the color correction, you go right here. Now it's all the same color correction. It's really easy to work with it this way. So this is kind of what I would recommend. And then when you want to export it, you get over here to the export tab. You'll have your timeline. You'll have this clip, which is good. That's what we want to see. You can then choose your formats. I'm super lazy, so I just do the YouTube. Call it whatever you want, like test. And then you choose all of these different things. I like to do H265. And then you say add to her queue. And then you add a render queue. You see it right there. And then that will be allowing you to export it now. Augury.